Hi, in this video I'll be demonstrating a PRR sensor. This is an automatic light switch that's going to switch on and off my light. Obviously you can use this with other things. It doesn't have to be a, a light. As you can see it says maximum 1200 watts. This is the maximum and I'm sure that is for resistive loads. If it was an inductive load you'd have to derate that by a certain amount. Probably you'll have to be, only be able to use a load of say 1000 watts or whatever the specification state. So how this works, it's got an infrared sensor and it probably measures within 120 degrees anywhere in the field of view. It will activate the relay and it will switch on your load. So while I have the specifications open, I can just go through it with you quickly. Detection range is 180 degrees. It then says it can handle 1.2 kilowatts if your voltage is 220 volts. If you're in a different uh, country, maybe your voltage is 110 or 120, you can see you have to derate that to 800 watts. So you have to look at the specifications and it also says that if you're using fluorescent lights, you can see that it actually only gives you 300 watts. So you've got to look at the type of loads that you are using before you just install this but I'm actually using an LED light so I'm not worried because my LED light is well below a hundred watts so you can see how you go from 1.2 kilowatts all the way down to 300 watts just depending on the load something to be aware of right there are some instructions in terms of how you install this obviously don't install this in direct sunlight don't install this outside looking at a tree or a moving bush because then it will keep activating so this is an indoor sensor in terms of mine and and I'll be installing this in a scullery uh, nearby a kitchen. Now just in terms of the principle of operation I do have a video explaining how uh, these type of switches work but basically you'll have your live and your neutral and then you'll have another live which is the load. So what will happen is the live and the neutral goes into your PIR sensor. If there's motion it will then allow inside there there'll be a relay it'll allow the live to go to your load so all it's doing is it's a controlled switch when it picks up motion it will close the relay allowing the current to flow into your light or whatever load you have so very important is it does need the neutral to work so if you're going to open up one of your light uh, switches and you don't have a neutral um, you won't get this working you have to have a neutral available because you have to be able to feed this PRR sensor current and that will be coming from the neutral as well. All right, so here's the light switch I'm going to be changing. This is going to be installed over here. Um, you can see it's slightly different in size, so that's going to be a little bit of a problem. But uh, hopefully the person who cut out the tile here um, left a bit of space. Now, the thing you need to know is, uh, in my case, uh, there are two switches here, but one is actually a dead circuit. So I was actually happy to blank this one off anyway. So I'm actually only going to be working with one circuit. And that one circuit is switching on the light in this area. And I'll show it to you now. Right, so here is the light and I switch it on and I switch it off on off. So that's the light that I want to control. Now at this stage you want to go and switch off your electricity. So make sure you've gone and disconnected the circuit, trip your uh, circuit breaker or switch off your earth leakage to get uh, the power off so you're working safely. So what you can see, I've got a live there um, and there, and then I've got for a load, this is for the uh, switch to switch on one light, and there's for the other light. So if I turn the switch on, then I've now switched on this circuit, and then if I turn this one on, I've now turned on this circuit. So as you can see, I'm missing a neutral. Remember, in order to get this working, you unfortunately have to have a neutral because this thing needs power to operate. So I'm going to have to locate a neutral and thread it into this light switch over there. Now remember I said you need the neutral. Now in my case I'm lucky because here is an outside light. Now this was the dead circuit. Remember I had two light switches. Now this is a very old fitting. They normally have a halogen globe there which is actually very very power hungry. So we don't use these so much anymore. Um, so now I'm going to disconnect this and I'll probably find the neutral here. And I'm going to feed that neutral back down the conduit into my light fitting. Well, how I will find it is because the uh, other circuit is here from that dead circuit from the live that was coming from the light switch. So I'm going to just remove this, catch the neutral, thread it through, bring it down to the wall switch, and then I'll be able to install the motion detector. 
Right, so this is the light fitting which I'm disconnecting. Now, I'm disconnecting it uh, because I don't need this anymore. Um, I've got other lights outdoors. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to cut the circuit out. So I'm going to remove this light fitting. So all I need to do is just cut this live here. There's the live. There's an earth here. And then there's the neutral. So I've removed the light fitting now and I could actually just blank this off and put a cover on, just tape, tape those up and put a cover on. But one of the reasons why I'm doing this is I need a neutral and they're sitting a neutral. So this is my closest neutral which I can actually now wire into the light switch. And the reason why I need this neutral is remember the PR sensor actually needs some current to operate. So if you recall on the light switch, this brown wire is actually the live which allows me to switch this old light on. So this could now be a neutral wire. I could rewire it. I could now thread a black wire because a black is the color for neutral. I could thread it into the uh, conduit and then now have a black wire for my neutral which will come from here. Where does this uh, black wire come from? This is in the ceiling and this is the common neutral going to the other light in the scullery and probably a few other lights along the way. So it doesn't matter that this is a common neutral. It's just that I'm going to use this neutral to allow me to get some current for my PRR sensor. So the earth I don't need, I can just push it to the back. Right, so to recap, there's the circuit I need, um, but here, this brown wire, this is the one going to that outdoor light, I don't need it, so I can remove it, and there is a spare wire, which I can now run as a neutral wire, because I've located a neutral, the closest neutral, which happened to be there by that outside light. Okay, so here is this brown wire, which I'd like to now re-thread as a neutral wire to that neutral point uh, where that outside light was. Now, if you didn't have that outside light, you would have to then thread this into your ceiling, or to a nearby neutral point. Now here is a neutral wire and you can see the color is black. Now you don't have to r run a whole new wire like I'm going to do but because I'm, I'm showing it in a video I've got to do it properly. Look lazy people would just um they would basically tape this in black on this side and they would tape it in black on that side and that would signify a neutral wire but because I'm doing the video I'm just going to do it properly. So this is the neutral from the ceiling which I'm eventually going to connect to and here's that brown wire which I'm now going to uh, rerun this black wire instead. So now I'm going to thread this in and there you can see the uh, new neutral wire coming through. Right, so I'm just going to open the neutral wire there and join it to this one. If you want to, you could use a terminal block like this, but I'm going to crimp it. Right, so they're the lives. Now, if you're wondering why there's two, the reason for why there's two is it's a daisy chain. So there's a live, and then this one's probably going to another light switch uh, somewhere else in this house. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove this. This is now what would be called your load. You see, you would be switching on your light. One, on, off, on, off. So this is your load. So I've disconnected that. And now these two red wires must still be kept together. In your case, you might just have one. I'm just gonna do a quick test on my live and neutral. So here I've got a multimeter, and what I'm gonna do is I just wanna make sure that I'm getting my, yeah, there you see, my, this is 246 volts. Uh, it's a bit higher than what it should be, but anyway, that's got to do with the area. So you can see there, my live and neutral are definitely working. Now I must go and switch off the circuit. Right, so now we wanna wire up this guy over here. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to remove the PRR section from this uh, little plate here. Right, so I've taken that off. Right, so here I have the live, the load, the neutral. Right, now this is off. Now it's time to wire this up. Now you will see that this is unconventional. You see it says they're black, live, live. So they're black goes to my red live. So that's why you've got to check the manual and check the wiring diagram because this is unconventional. Usually black would be neutral. 
Now in this case, I'm just going to be using terminal blocks because it's easier. So there we go. Right, now looking here again, now it says red is the load. There red must go to my white because this is the load, this is the light that I'm trying to control. So there we go. And while we're here, their neutral is green. So they're using green for neutral, which again is also not conventional. Okay, if you're wondering what this is, you see on the side of the load, there's a connection to the neutral. Now, in the video, I don't show this because my light already has a connection to the neutral. So in the roof or in the ceiling, when, uh, when they wired the light, they already connected it to the neutral. So in order for an electrical appliance to work, it needs a live and a neutral. So this neutral was already there. So just to recap, all this PRR is doing is allowing the live to be connected to the live of your load. So it's just acting as a motion controlled switch. So the current comes in, if there's motion, it allows the current to go to the load. But remember that the current still has to go somewhere, it has to go back to the source. So therefore it goes out of the load and back into the neutral. So this connection just over here is already done in the ceiling. Now you saw me connecting to a neutral. I was connecting probably there and just running that wire to my PRR. Remember my PRR also is an electronic device and needs current coming in and current going out to the neutral. So that is why the PRR also needs a neutral because it's an electronic device, there's some capacitors and resistors in there. In order to work, it cannot just work off a live. It needs a live and a neutral. So this on the side here was already done in your ceiling. Right, so now it's done. Now what I'm going to do is before I uh, install this, I'm just going to check that it's working. So I'm just going to put those inside there. The earth I've just taped up and put inside there because this is plastic. And uh, if it was metal like this in your conventional uh, wiring setup, you would have an earth point there because this is metal. But this being plastic, there's no earth point and even with the cover also being plastic. So I'm going to quickly do a test, which means I'm now going to go and switch it on. Right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to now close this up and then I'll show you it working. And just having a look at these wires, there's no way that this could handle 1.2 kilowatts. Right, so I just want to show you the faceplate of this. So you've got the on and it automatically switches on the light. You're not seeing the light go on, but I'll show you uh, with the camera just now. Then off, now the light has actually gone off. Then motion, and then I can hear the relay activate and the light actually just went on. Now you can set the time for how long the light stays on. So if I put it to the minimum, that's 10 seconds. It's not uh, very accurate, but that was about 25 seconds. But nevertheless, if I adjust this longer, um, then it will stay on for 30 minutes, up to 30 minutes, which I'm now thinking will be quite a lot longer, considering it was more than uh, 10 seconds on the minimum. And then what that means is if you come into the room, the light will go on. It'll stay on for whatever it says there, 30 minutes plus whatever inaccuracy, and then it'll go off. Then when you come back in the room, it'll come on again for that amount of time. So if you only want it to come on for short bursts, then you'll put it towards the minimum. So now it's in the auto. Right, the setting on the left here, which is Lux, this is how bright the ambient light conditions are. For example, here it's set to maximum. That means that this will work or this will operate even in the day. If there's a lot of sunlight around, it'll still activate the PRR. Some people may not want that. They may say, well, look, there's enough light coming through the windows or whatever it is. Um, this must only work when it gets dark outside. So they will then reduce this to possibly 40 or 30 lumens. If it's set to a minimum value. So what that means is this will only operate if the ambient light conditions are darker. However, just keep in mind that when the light uh, switches on, if the light shines into this PRR, obviously then it's going to switch it back off. So just be mindful of the placement. If you only want this to work in the night, just be careful where you place this. Best to place the uh, light switch where the light does not shine directly onto the sensor if you only want it to work 
in low lighting conditions. But in my case, I'm happy with the light coming on in the day because the scullery as a, that area where I was working does not get a lot of light in the day. So I actually have my light on even in the, in the daytime. So therefore I put it to maximum, which means this PRR sensor must operate under all lighting conditions. Now what you can do is you can actually close that by putting this cover back on. But to do that, you need to take this cover off. So now I'm gonna show you it working. I'm gonna show you the light. Okay, so just to orientate you, there is the motion sensor and uh, I'm going to get someone to walk through the doorway and you'll see the light will come on. So there's the doorway, there's the light and now someone will come through there and obviously the motion sensor will activate the light. And before I even walked in, it already activated the light. Okay, so that brings you to the end of the video. Thanks for watching. Cheers.